Independence Day Resurgence is a remake of Independence Day with a certain soda. You guessed it. Pepsi. What'd you think I was gonna say, sir? Welcome to Earth. Independence Day Resurgence is the long-awaited sequel to the 1996 film Independence Day. It's once again directed by Roland Emmerich and starring Jeff Goldblum, Bill Pullman, Judd Hirsch, uh, Brett Spiner, um, I, and Vivica Fox. That's pretty much the main cast from the first one that came back, as well as some new characters like uh, played by Liam Hemsworth and Maka Monroe, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, the girl from It Follows. First off, I want to say the movie has a really great premise. Um, it's been 20 years since the aliens tried to invade. There's lots of their technology that we ha got access to that we didn't have before. So our technology has kind of merged with theirs. So it's a much more futuristic um, look to everything and more sci-fi looking, even though it takes place in 2016. Now, if I'm starting out with saying that the premise is great, then there's a, probably a problem. Before I go any further, Batman vs. Superman, you're off the hook. No longer the biggest disappointment of the year for me. I w I'm a big fan of the original Independence Day. I know it's not fucking art, but it's a really well put together, big action movie. And Will Smith, Bill Pullman, Jeff Goldblum, Judd Hirsch, Vivica Fox, they're all great in the original. With Smith and Goldblum really delivering the charisma and just kind of carrying the movie really well. This doesn't really have that. Jeff Goldblum is back, and when he has things to do, he does them pretty well, although they make some big leaps in logic. I know they did that in the original with uh, the virus thing, but in this one, I mean, I guess it's, it's been shown in the previews. There's a queen, and Jeff Goldblum figures that out. I don't remember how. It's somebody saying, well, it's like, ha, hive. Oh, there must have been a queen. And there must have been a queen 20 years ago, too. We just didn't know. Okay, let's move on. It's accepted now that there's a queen, even though they have no other evidence. This movie, it seems like what would happen if somebody said, these are the ingredients to Independence Day, you make another movie like that, and they handed it to less talented people. What's strange is that Roland Emmerich came back, the director of the original came back, and a lot of the stars, Jeff Goldblum, Bill Pullman, to be the main two, came back. I don't know what the fuck happened. It, it It's really like a poor imitation of the original. <sighs> this movie's pacing and tone are really all over the place. It doesn't really ease you into the action. It just kind of happens fast when it happens. And the comedy is thrown in at weird spots, and most of it doesn't work at all. One of the actors and one of the main characters I haven't mentioned so far is Jesse Usher, who plays Dylan Hiller, Will Smith's son from the original. And that's because I think he's kind of terrible in the movie. You're replacing Will Smith and you're not really charismatic, and that's a problem because he just oozes charisma, Will Smith. He's like endlessly watchable. He made uh, The Terrible Wild Wild West actually a movie you could sit through because he is at least good in the movie. Like, it's not a good movie. I'm not... Don't quote me on saying it's a good movie, but... It's, it's watchable. Will Smith uh, kind of carried that movie. The structure of this movie seems like it's trying to be like the original um, in a lot of ways, where they have lots of different side characters all kind of coming together um, at the end with the same kind of things happening. Uh, the movie's also about a half an hour shorter, and I think that it really could have used that half an hour to kind of space things out. Because this movie, it starts out, there's some weird kind of action scenes early on in the movie, which are, I guess, so you don't get bored. And it takes a little while for the aliens to show up. But when they do, it's not like the original where they show up and, you know, they set their chess pieces, as, as it was put. Uh, and then the countdown happens and boom. Uh, this, the ship landing is what is the boom. 
Like, they, they destroy everything just with the one landing, and in the original, you have, like, the destruction kind of means something. You see it more, you see the ground level more. This, aside from, like, a couple characters, which really equate to one, because they all are kind of together, um, but aside from seeing their very limited perspective on the dis destruction, you don't really get a good a good visual of it. And often when they're showing it, it, it seems green screen and kind of fake, so there's less weight to it than that. There's a couple of character deaths that are played terribly. Uh, one early on in the movie where they did not set it up at all to mean a fucking thing, and it it's just kind of ridiculous. Even if you're familiar with the characters, and you know you should feel something, you just don't. Brett Spiner, Data from Star Trek. He was in the original, the long-haired scientist. He is back in this one, and he's back way too much. Um, in this movie, he wakes up out of a coma. And then all of a sudden, he's just like the head of uh, Area 51 again, which doesn't make any sort of sense. You've been out of it for 20 years. Think about how much technology has grown in 20 years in our world, and we don't have alien technology fitting into that. Think about what a cell phone was in 1996. But anyway, he, he wakes up from a coma, um, and apparently his muscles haven't atrophied at all, so he's good. He does he can just walk right around. Uh, and then, then becomes the head of Area 51 again, and he's just he's in, in charge of everything. And apparently also the, the hospital or whatever he's in must have been on Area 51 as well, which is really strange. All this negative isn't to say there's not fun to be had, because there is some fun to be had. Liam Hemsworth, Thor's little brother, is actually pretty good in the movie. I liked him. I feel like they should have merged his character with Hitler's character, though, and then you would have had one likable character. You have to cast somebody else, because even if Liam Hemsworth is a good actor, he can't play Will Smith's son, and the other guy wasn't good. So you have to get somebody else. Maybe Michael B. Jordan would have worked in the role. As I mentioned before, Goldblum is good in the movie, and I really liked his interactions that he had with his father. They had a good chemistry, a good rapport. Also, Bill Pullman was good in the movie. He gave the best performance, I think, really of anybody in the movie. Although, they do some stupid things with his character, and that's more on the script than on him. But I, I think he did a good job. The action is also, in general, shot very well, and it looks very good. Special effects are done quite well. I will say a negative, though, is that the characters in this movie, uh, none of them wear like the ga like the masks when they're flying. They're uh, flying planes, which I guess, if you think about, well, they have alien technology, so maybe they've figured out a way that's not necessary. It it kind of just it makes it feel less real, less like they're in it. And I don't I don't know if they did something different in the original or not, but it just felt like those characters were in the cockpit before. Um, it felt like they were in danger, they were really flying the planes. In this one, every time it showed one of the characters flying, it just, I was just thinking like, oh, I'm seeing a guy sitting in a chair and a green screen's near him. And that's all I'm seeing right now. And then it's gonna cut to CG. It just, that took me out of it. Again, the action is shot well, but the character inserts, those just, those were not done well. So Independence Day Resurgence is a poor man's version of the original. Uh, honestly, I don't know how it went as bad as it did, and it really fucking sucks to say that. Independence Day Resurgence is rated D. So given that when I reviewed The Tree of Life, I already asked you what the most disappointing movie you watched is because that one fucking was and even still is compared to Independence Day Resurgence. That one's worse. At least this one has something that can... Like, I could stare off into that one at least for a while. Like, Independence Day Resurgence, I could put on on a Saturday afternoon while I'm doing housework or something and just you know, enjoy the background noise and shit. Tree of Life? Not so much. Oh, there'd be whispering. And there'd be dinosaurs. Alright, I'm a little off track here, but... Fuck Tree of Life. Anyway, um, given that Independence Day Resurgence is an alien movie, uh, name an alien movie you really like, and one that I really like, aside from Mac and Me, which I think I liked it when I was a kid, but uh, just from that clip Paul Rudd keeps on showing, it seems like it's probably terrible. Um, so pushing that one to the side, one I really like is Signs. It's my personal favorite of the M. Night Shyamalan movies. 
and I think it's just a really well done science fiction alien movie that you don't even really know for sure is an alien movie until about halfway through. Um, so anyway, name an alien movie you really like, make your mark below in the comment section. Please like, share, and subscribe, and thank you so much for watching. Independence Day Resurgence is a <laughs> is a remake of Independence Day with a certain soda. That's right, Pepsi. What do you think I was gonna say? Surge. Hi. Well, I'm not entirely sure uh, what the rules are for using a product like Surge in a video, except for I know that I can do it if I uh, review the product. If it's part of a review, you're allowed to show it, of course, because how can you review it without showing it? So, here's my review of Surge. Well, it tastes like somebody canned the 90s. It's very citrusy. It's like Mountain Dew had sex with orange soda. I feel like this is what you'd get. It's like energy drink before energy drink was a thing. It's good. Surge. It's good. Liam Hemsworth. Liam Hemsworth. Liam Hem. Liam Hemsworth. <laughs> so in this movie, since it's an alien movie, let's have you name him. Uh, Independence Day Resurgence is rated D. For Dick.